So yeah, welcome everybody to Project Microtile, which is just this little weird thing I'm working on now where we make these tiny little tiles. They're completely procedural and they only take a couple nodes. And I thought, you know what? I'll try to make a tutorial for it. If it's a hit, it's a hit. If not, you know, I'll never mention it again. Um, but I think there's a lot of value to be added uh, from these little projects because, you know, the essence of them is just showing one or two tricks each and every single time. So this time I'm going to be working on this kind of like sine wave distribution. Uh, discretized kind of thing. I don't know what any of these are. The essence of it, as long as it's like procedural, black and white, goes for 60 frames and loops, it's a micro tile. Don't know what that means, but uh, that's fine. So let me show you how to make this one on this episode of, oh yes, micro tiles. Hopefully this is a hit, we'll see. Uh, to make this, we are going to start off with a new Blender project, and uh, for this one, I'm going to show you how I like to set these things up and then get into the nodes, but in the future, uh, probably not going to show you how to set this up. That sounds like a major waste of time. Speaking of waste of time, uh, let's get right into it. So, cube, we're going to get rid of it and instead replace it with a plane, because this is where we're going to make it, be making our material, kind of projecting this proceduralism uh, kind of stuff. I'm going to take the camera, look at the uh, location, rotation, whatever. And I'm just going to position it like a bit above uh, so that we're looking downwards on this tile. And I know this part's boring. You're like, oh, I just want to get to the proceduralism. You're crying. The the tears are pouring. And quite frankly, I do not care. <laughs> uh, this, this is important to go over every once in a while. Um, I'm just setting up the camera. So it's just ho over the tile, maybe going in a bit. Um, I guess I'm rendering these in kind of like square one by one aspect ratio resolutions. I hadn't considered that, but I guess that's true. Um, make sure you do that. Um, another thing, these are going to be 30 frames per second. And for the render tab, color management is going to be set to standard. I think other than that, that's pretty much the whole setup <laughs> uh, for these micro tiles. So now let's get into the, the whole reason why you're here. I guess you don't know why you're here. You didn't know what micro tiles were uh, when you clicked on them. But now, uh, now that you know, let's get into the proceduralism. Okay. Uh, so now that we have our point, I'm going to make a material. This is going to be material number one because I'm planning to make a whole bunch of these. And um, how do we make the sine wave? Well, if you think about it, the sine wave micro tile is essentially just kind of like graphing as if you were doing it on graph paper. You're back in eighth grade. They're like graph a sine wave. Well, you'd have to be pretty dumb to do it in eighth grade, maybe like first grade or something. I don't know. Whenever you do it, they're like, okay, graph a sine wave. Uh, we're going to do that, and then we're just going to mess with it to get a more unique looking result. So uh, first question is, how do we do that, which is graph a sine wave? Uh, to do that, I'm first going to need texture coordinates. If we want to plot x versus y on the plane, we need coordinates. I'm going to use object coordinates because those are simple to think about, where the origin is in the middle. We have an x-axis and a y-axis. So this is negative x, negative y, positive y, positive x. Uh, super easy to think about. I'm going to take this, and first of all, we want to graph our sine wave. So let's separate it by x, y, and z, uh, so that we can look at each component. Z component's kind of useless. Forget about it. Um, to graph a sine wave, all we need to do is take our x components. In other words, as we're going from left to right, uh, we take this and filter it through a math node. Can you guess which one it is, you super smart, intelligent person? Well, it's going to be sine, trig trigonometric sine, not in the sense of this sine, but this one. Um, in other words, now we have uh, the x coordinate uh, filtered through sine, which doesn't look uh, much different. And, you know, uh, point is we're not actually graphing it presently. Right now we're just altering this kind of like a linear going from one side to another kind of thing. Uh, to make it look like a graph, we need to compare it to the y-axis. So we need to see where like sine of x is equal, or at least somewhat equal to y. And to do that, uh, what we can do, greater than, less than, whatever you want. So we're, right now we're going to be graphing a region or comparing them. Uh, we're going to compare one to the other. And now you can see we have kind of like a fraction. Remember, a uh, sine wave has a period, a kind of like full one end to another distance of a two pi. Uh, if you didn't know that, well, now you do. Uh, and since our um, x-axis is only going from negative one to one, we're only getting a tiny portion of this. So it doesn't look like a sine wave. If we were to like multiply this, uh, so we get kind of like a larger section of the period, you can see now we have a procedural uh, sine wave. Um, point is, we have a section of it. We can graph the bottom region. We can graph the top region with less than. We could even uh, kind of graph the thing as you'd normally see it with compare. So this is going to be kind of uh, comparing it with th within a certain threshold. This is how you'd graph it, but I'm not going to do any of these things. Instead, what we are going to do is set it to subtract, uh, which is going to give us this gradient, kind of like the region of greater than, except these values are negative up here. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this. I'm going to filter it through an absolute value so that we get, if I can even find this thing, that, that's absolutely 
You get it? It's, it's a joke. Absolutely the hardest part, uh, finding it. So uh, now we've taken this uh, gradient we made before and scaled it in some sense, so the negative values are also positive. There we go. Um, okay, so now we have kind of the base of a sine wave. We want to animate it before we make it to look good. Um, and remember, if I was to put in a multiplication here, we can see more of the period. And also remember, uh, from your high school class or elementary school, I keep saying that, um, if we add instead of multiply, this is called phase. So we're just kind of inputting a different angle into the sine wave, which is going to make it look like it's animated, okay? Uh, so this is the trick to the animation. Uh, I guess for this one, I'm going to go by my rules where it's going from frame 1 to 60. Um, I guess really 1 to 59, so it doesn't repeat frame 1 and 60. And we want to have one full period from left to right happen over 60 frames. And again, remember, a period is 2 pi. So uh, what we want to do is add a special kind of mathematical expression that handles all these things, okay? Uh, to do this, what we are going to do, and I guess we need to think about it a bit. First of all, we need to get the frame number. So with a value node, we can type in hash. Uh, frame, not in caps lock, I guess, hash frame is going to give a driver that tells us exactly what frame we're on, no matter what frame that is. Uh, we want to take this and I guess divide it by 60 so that, or maybe 59, we need to think, I think it's 60. Uh, we divide it by this so that as it gets closer and closer and closer to 60, this driver, um, this division is getting closer and closer to 1. So instead of going from 1 to 60 with this driver, uh, now we're going from 0 to 1. Basically, you can think of this as a linear scaling, okay? Uh, so now we have a factor, a custom one that goes from 0 to 1, and we want this to affect kind of the magnitude of our 2 pi period. Don't think about it too hard. Just do, don't think is, is a good motto. So we're going to multiply this by the period uh, 2 pi. So in other words, when we're on frame 1, which is, you know, pretty much 0, um, imagine that this is 0. Uh, we're going to take our period 2 pi and basically multiply it by 0. So we're, we're basically at 0. And then as this gets closer and closer to 1, we're getting closer and closer to multiplying it by 1, which is 2 pi. Uh, so let's see what this gives us, long story short. Um, it gives us a linear uh, kind of thing. We wouldn't want to do some kind of power or whatever. We want it to be a linear kind of transformation uh, that perfectly loops um, I think if we did 59, that would actually mess it up on the last uh, and first frame. But uh, you can play with that, and you can think about it. I think 1 through 60 should be fine. Whatever. Okay, cool. So now we have the basic setup, and now it's just kind of the fun of making it look good. And to be honest, I only used a single node uh, to do this, since we have this gradient 0 exactly, where sine of x is equal to y, and then getting closer and closer to 1 as we uh, go away from it vertically, at least not along the uh, curve normal. Don't worry about that. That's a bit of differential geometry. Um, point is, we have this gradient, and with a single node, something like, um, I mean, this isn't what I did, but with like modulo, you can get very cool looking results where it kind of does rounding. Uh, same thing with fraction, once it loads. Um, I think what I ended up using was snap. Um, so instead of getting, once this loads, instead of just getting a normal gradient we want to round to the nearest, I don't know, uh, 0.4 or like one third or whatever, maybe. I think one over seven should give us, give us uh, seven bands above and below. Um, I think this is what I ended up doing because when you zoom out, it kind of has this cool looking effect of kind of like a dithering uh, kind of situation going on. Another thing that I didn't do for my own, but you could do, just a quick little trick, we'll talk about it if we do more micro tiles, noise texture, we're going to use this for distortion, um, the object coordinates, which are driving everything, by the way, so if we add in like a vector math and translate it, this is affecting everything, right? Um, if we take our object coordinates and uh, do a, I guess either a vector math or a mixing is probably the faster way to go about it. We mix it with a noise set to linear light. Don't worry about too much about why it is a linear light. Uh, point is, this is the one that works. Uh, we can actually add a bit of distortion. So this is what we had before, you know, pretty much unaltered by the noise. And then we could add just a bit of noise uh, to add a bit of visual interest. You up, up, you, uh, ba, 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 ba. you up the detail is what I'm trying to say. You up the roughness. And now you get this kind of blurry, kind of super rough sketch looking uh, kind of effect where again, you can control how strong that is. So just with a couple nodes, um, I think, especially if we don't use this like noise kind of situation, but just plug it in immediately. Um, you know, disregarding the nodes that don't matter, like material output and this viewer node that we actually don't even need, if we connect it. Um, I think we've done something like under 10 nodes. We, I mean, I guess we could count them, but whatever. Uh, this is the idea of a micro tile. Uh, it looks better once you make it super small and render it next to a bunch of other micro tiles that are in fact looping at 60, not 60 frames per second, but a 60 frame interval, a period of 60 frames. Very fitting uh, for this one. Um, 
yeah, I mean, what, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that this is the tutorial, okay? Now you know how to make this micro tile um, more so than usual. I will be reading the comments, which is to say I will be reading them uh, for this video. Do tell me if you want more micro tiles, just this kind of super quick procedural result. Next time I won't do the setup. I'll just kind of hop right into it maybe. Um, but do give me feedback. I'm interested uh, this time. Um, but yeah, you now know how to make a micro tile. Um, I guess this is the part in the end of the tutorial where I usually pimp out or rather promote the Patreon. So I guess I'll do that. Uh, before we do that, I want to say thank you to the 560 some patrons that are active currently. You guys are single handedly as a group in some sense, uh, funding both these tutorials and the CG Matter tutorials. I want to thank you for that. And for people who want to maybe join the Patreon and you're like, why would I do that? Why would I spend money uh, to do something like this? Well, you don't just get nothing, you get a ton of benefits. First of all, you get exclusive tutorials. Uh, those used to, uh, not used to be, those tend to be a, a tutorial series per month, so they're kind of like longer uh, tutorials. These are exclusive tutorials that are not available on either channel. Um, Additionally, you get the blend file. So for example, obviously you're going to get this blend file, the ones in the past, the ones in the future. So I think right now you can get access to maybe 100, maybe even more blend files since I've been doing this for a while. Also, Discord access. Early, um, early, uh, there, there's a name for this, early access access, which is to say sometimes I upload a video a bit early and make it unlisted and you can see it. Um, additionally, what, what else did I not say? Behind the scenes, stuff like that. This is the reason, uh, I assume, other maybe you guys just like these tutorials. Maybe that's why, but I'm assuming these are the reasons uh, people joined the Patreon. So that exists. Thank you to everybody who's already on there. And thank you, uh, regardless of that, uh, for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Give me the feedback. I'm interested this time. And uh, yeah, that's the show. So uh, see ya.